Well, maybe I can just walk right through the front door. How does that sound? Okay, did not work. Hey everyone, this is part 11 of Resistance Fall of Man. Oh god, how has everybody been? I've missed you so much. Now, so let me give you a little update, because I gotta give you one. Um, basically, uh, part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, those were all my, like, super pre-recorded parts that I did. Uh, I even told you about that in those parts that I was pre-recording a lot of videos to work on some other videos, and also to give myself some more leg room with personal stuff and me being, being able to just play other video games and enjoy them. I'm happy to report that I now am a proud owner of a Final Fantasy X Platinum Trophy on PlayStation 3, of course, and the game. I clocked in about 150 hours into the game. I Zan mottoed Penance my first try. I defeated Nemesis, those Dark Aeons. I did everything, and man, oh man, that was just probably the best three weeks of 2014 so far. I Every day I came home from work, I'd play that game. I'd finish LTPS and I'd play that game. Ah, oh, Final Fantasy X, man. You guys know, you guys see me wearing the, uh, the Titus necklace, basically, on my neck all the time when I'm doing LTPS. Huge Final Fantasy fan, so that was a really great time. Haven't jumped into X2 just yet. Uh, what's under here? Can I get under here? Oh, shit. Uh, it's been a while since I played, so I already forgot the controls of Resistance. There we go. Uh, what's under here? Anyway, I didn't jump into X2 just yet, because now there's some actual, like, recent retail releases coming out, and I might want to review some, some of them. Like, uh, the God of War collection on Vita, Sly collection on Vita, I'll review those. So, you know, just to test their frame rate and everything, because people are so sketchy about uh, how the Jack collection on Vita was kind of crap. And then uh, Octodad is coming out, which I'm not going to review because, like, the PC version's already out. If you want to see reviews, plenty of people have given some quality reviews on that, ga that game. But I want to go play that personally myself, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, this is a very interesting part of Resistance Fall of Man, uh, this particular area, and I'll tell you why. So, uh, we'll go in here first, so I'll, you know, I'll keep playing the game instead of telling so many stories. Uh, get the far eye, fair eye out. Far eye, fair eye. Far eye, fair eye. Anyway, uh, this is a particular part of the game because now I didn't get a, I didn't get my PS3 on launch day. PS3 launched in North America on November 17th. I have a launch PS3, but I didn't get it on November 17th. I got mine a few weeks after. I guess I must have gotten lucky and got, gotten somebody's pre-ordered system that they didn't, you know, they didn't pick up. I got it like a few weeks later, like in December. Um, but my uncle got a launch PlayStation 3, like day of. So I would play his until I got mine, and we had Resistance, and I was playing it on his PlayStation 3, mind you, and I got all the way up to this part of the game, this specific house, uh, this specific area, and that's when his PlayStation 3 started to act a little funky, man, like the graphics were like going all crazy, like it was, it's hard to explain, but basically it was clear, there was clearly an issue with the PlayStation 3 where... Uh, like, shit was getting all distorted, and, like, there would be huge lines, like, clipping into the, the screen in the game. Sometimes the screen would go black, like, clearly there was an issue. And then there was also an issue with Tony Hawk's Project 8, which was the same exact thing, which would, you know, indicate that it was clearly uh, a hardware issue and not just a game-by-game -game issue. And, uh... And so it was just memorable in the fact that, uh, and I, I, he wasn't really a gamer, which is funny how he picked up a launch PS3, but, um, he wasn't really a gamer, so he's like, yeah, you, you want it fixed and everything, like, you do it for me, you're the one that plays, plays it all the time anyway, and I was fine with that, so I called Sony support to get it fixed, fucking shoot him, dude, um, and the guy's like, so what's the problem here, blah, 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 and I was like, oh, well, this, this, and that, and he's like, oh, we'll restore the default settings, which is basically the Sony, the first Sony go-to, whatever you, whenever you call Sony support, the first thing they're going to tell you for any system, for any piece of hardware, is to restore the default settings, whether that's PSP, Vita, PS3, PS4. So I did that, and then he's like, okay, well, so start playing the game and see if you have any issues. So then I'm, <laughs> I thought that was kind of awkward, so I was like, okay, so I started playing the game, and I'm just sitting there on the phone with this guy playing Resistance, and five minutes goes by of complete silence, and I'm like, this is kind of awkward, and luckily nothing was happening just yet, so he's like, any issues? And I was like, 
nope, nothing's going on just yet. And he's like, okay, keep playing. And I was like, okay, well, I, I guess I will. I kept playing the game. But then, um, but then I was like, okay, yeah, everything seems fine. And we're like, okay, bye. And then the second I hang up, like, shit started happening again. So I called, got a new guy, and I was like, yeah, I got issues. And I already, I already did what the previous guy said. And cutscene. Basically, we got our PS3 fixed. <laughs> Side. Where are you? Right. We see you now. Be advised, Sergeant. We're going in heavy in a little low. Bloody hell! I can't land with that stalker there! Okay, so because it's been a few weeks, because I've been only been uploading one Let's Play a week, not to, like flood the channel. I used to do like three Let's Plays a week. Now you've, if you haven't noticed, I've, I clearly am only uploading one a week, but um, yeah, so it's been like nine, ten weeks since I <laughs> last played Resistance, and I'm already kind of confused on where I where I am in the story and everything. But we're, we're essentially right near the end of the game. There's only one more chapter after this, unless this is the final chapter. I'm not entirely sure. We have to go in a tower, I believe. That's the whole point, kind of. There's a standard stalker here. He's kind of easy to take care of. You know, we've dealt with stalkers at this point. Oh, and actually, because I can just tell you this, remember I told you my original plan was, and it's not going up right after this because we don't want to overdo Resistance, but that I was going to record a Resistance 3 Let's Play co-op with my, my friend Brandon, who you may or may not know before we did uh, a Crash Bash Let's Play on this channel. Well, because the resistance servers were going offline, we did, we decided to record that before the service, uh, the servers went offline. So we recorded the whole game actually. So it's all done. Uh, but uh, like I said, we're not gonna upload that just yet. That's probably like a good thing I can bank for like eventually, maybe when I'm super busy or something, and we'll upload that. But yeah, the whole we've got the whole Resistance Three uh, co-op recorded, and it was a great. It was awesome. It was really funny. Really fun. Me and him had a great time playing that game. I was trying. To, he never played any of the Resistance games, so I was trying to explain. I was trying to explain the story, but it's just like you know, it's kind of like over his head basically. He doesn't. He doesn't play games that often, but um, he was just kind of like whatever about it. We were just playing the game and having fun, really. Although I am upset though because uh, most of the footage is pretty great. We got. We recorded both of our screens for most most of the footage, so I can make like Rooster Teeth style cuts to our screens, but, like, I, I, I'm going to assume the last four or five parts of the game, of the, of the Let's Play, when it goes to YouTube, it's only going to be my screen, because for some fucking reason, um, uh, what's the, so the software, the software for, uh, the Elgato, just was not fucking, it did, like, I, we would record, finish, I'd check the files, and then it just didn't give me a file, and I was, re I was recording the whole time, so I'm like, what the fuck, let's, that, that really blows, because uh, my HD PVR recorded just fine, that's what I use for my screen, and that was my that's my first capture card that I always use. And it's also pretty sketchy when I record PS4 footage, because HD PVR uh, doesn't have HDMI for PS3, it only has component, so I had to buy a second capture card, which is the Elgato, which has HDMI, and then I, you know, did the illegal thing for PS4 footage, but yeah, like, sometimes it wouldn't work. Oh, this is the first time you actually get to fight this, the, uh, these things. They're like spider chimera things, I don't know their name. I had to look up the lore, which I don't clearly have on hand. Fucking die, dude! Thank you, Jesus. Quit sperming on me. Anyway. What was I talking about? Um, yeah, dude, so Al Elgato was really, it, Elgato's really been pissing me off. I don't know why it, it keeps messing up for me and it's not giving me footage. I really don't know why. Um, I have a good computer, like a very powerful computer to, like, to handle the software, it doesn't crash or mess up or anything. Um, the settings seem all fine, like I don't know, I don't know what the issue is. It was really, it really irritated me, so the last four or five parts of that are probably going to come out uh, not that great. Uh, it's uh, around Easter time when I'm recording this, a couple days after Easter. I have a lot of candy on hand because I went out and bought a lot of candy because, you know, it's my only excuse really to buy candy. You know, I grow, growing up, and I'm pretty sure I've maybe have talked about this before, I let my teeth go to hell as a kid. I would eat, I would eat a lot of candy and, like, I love fruit roll-ups and stuff, but they're so fucking bad for your teeth. I let my teeth go to hell, and 
Like, I, like, I really fucking let them go to fucking hell. Like, I destroyed my teeth. I am the prime example of, like, like, brush your teeth and floss because you'll end up like me. I have six fake teeth. Uh, I have, like, I think upwards to 20 fillings. Yeah, dude, it's bad. My, my teeth are pretty damn expensive right now. There's, uh, there's easily probably 10 grand in my teeth right now. Um, which is fine because, uh, <laughs> insurance and, um... Fucking tank control sucks so bad, dude. Uh, and my teeth look good, so that's fine. But I want I let them go to hell. So because of that, I really kind of stopped eating candy like as much as I used to growing up. Like from like when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure I can't go over here. Maybe? Yeah. No? Do I go up here? Well, there's a stalker there. I'm going to. Okay, he's just gonna approach me. Oh, that was fast. Are you sure I'm not supposed to go up here? No, I gotta go somewhere else. Oh my god, tank control suck. So I don't, I don't eat as much candy as I usually do. In fact, I hardly ever eat candy. And, I've been, and recently, I've been trying to drink a lot more water. Because uh, you know I'm a huge Pepsi, uh, uh, Coke drinker. Not Pepsi. <laughs> I almost said Pepsi. But we have Pepsi at my j uh, job, so I usually drink Pepsi there. And I always ask my uh, manager, like, can we please make Coke our distributor? And he's like, no. Which is pretty lame. So I try to drink more water, and I don't drink as much candy. Or I don't, I don't drink as much candy? What the? I don't eat as much candy. Where am I supposed to go? Oh, well, <laughs> those guys. So I got a bunch of candy on hand right now. Because it's one time out of the year. Actually, there's multiple times out of the year. Christmas, because, you know, stockings and stuff. I got Butterfingers. I'm a huge... I'm a Kit Kat fan. Huge Kit Kat fan. Which, it sucks to be a Kit Kat fan here, because you really can only have just... The usual shit that America usually has. Japan, for example, is awesome. It's an awesome Kit Kat country because uh, they have so many random ass Kit Kat flavors like green tea and pumpkin spice and chili uh, peppers and all sorts of really random stuff. So I, once in a while, I'll spend absurd amounts of money to import some crazy Kit Kats flavors into America and give them a go. And they're really good. They're actually not that bad. It's like the pricing is not that bad from what you'd expect. It's like four bucks for like four bucks, free shipping for like, and, and yeah, like it's it's a shit amount of Kit Kats. But you'd think like, oh, you need twenty bucks or something to import uh, like small Kit Kats. But no, four like or twenty. It, you know, you think it'd be like twenty bucks or something crazy, but it's like four bucks, which isn't bad. But I'll do that occasionally, and they're so good. And for the hell of it, I've been uh, studying a little bit of uh, Japanese, like the actual language, which I don't really know why, because I'm not, like, I'm not like, like, I don't really watch anime or anything. I do find Japan to be a fascinating country. It's a fascinating country to go to, for sure. Um, but there's no point in learning the language if I'm not going to go there anytime soon, which I'm not. I would like to go in the next maybe two, three years. But, um, you know, that's two, three years from now. Which may be okay. Yeah, I should practice. By the time I get there, I can maybe, like, you know, get around, like, travel and uh, or properly order food and whatnot. But still, like, you know, it's not like I'm going to live there or anything. Like, it'd be much more sensible to learn, like, Mandarin or something. Because uh, there's a shitload of people in America know Mandarin. There's a shitload of pe uh, Chinese people here. They're all over the place, and the restaurant I the restaurant I work at is right on the Canadian border, and there's a lot of there's a lot of fucking uh, uh, Asian people that live in in Canada. There's a bunch, and they all speak Mandarin, and they're always in the restaurant. So that would actually be a lot more sensible to learn Mandarin, but I don't have as huge of an interest to go to China as I do Japan. So I don't know, but I am learning some Japanese. It's a nice nice time to it's nice to learn something, you know. Nundeska. I think I just asked. I said what or something. Deska, yeah, deska is like a, posing it as a question, and none is what. So Nundeska, I'm asking you like what is it or something. I don't know. I'm getting there. Hajime mashite is like, how are you? Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Like, nice to meet you. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Very, a very formal way of saying thank you. I'm getting there. I'm learning. I'm learning some odd wor odd words every now and then, like int pizu is pencil, and the pen is just pen. Also, do I know? Kaban is like bag, 
The newspaper is Shinbloom. Really weird stuff. I just bought like a simple iPhone app to kind of scan over some shit every now and now and again. I wonder how. Uh, I know we're supposed to be in like a tower or something at some point in this game. <laughs> yeah, because we haven't even really talked about resistance uh, at all in this part. Oh, by the way, please let me know how you're doing. I sincerely want to know. Sincerely want to know. You know, I'm always talking to you guys in the comments. You know, I'm in there. I'm always scouting, looking around. No, it's weird. I, I'm now having extreme anxiety when it comes to um, making sure there's no mistakes in videos. Like, and when I upload or perhaps spelling or the title or the description. I've made so many mistakes in the past, and I'm really, like, nervous about it and anxious about it. arrived in London nearly unscathed. It was hard not to stare in awe at the tower. We had only fled London six months earlier, and now it was almost unrecognizable. The whole city was covered in snow. I knew the Chimera thrived in cold weather, but it was hard to fathom how they might actually be altering the climate itself. The power conduits, the snow, and the tower had to be related in some way. There was no time to think about it. Their armies were already guarding the tower, and more would be coming. We set the tanks up in assault formation and started across Tower Bridge. The last tanks were crossing the bridge when we saw Goliaths approaching from behind. We had to destroy the bridge before they caught up to our tanks. Hale and a few other soldiers took up defensive positions while the charges were being set. Okay, so, yeah, so this kind of shows you a little bit about how it really foreshadows, like, the rest of the res Resistance games and how the Chimera operate. You know, there's these towers. Uh, near the tower, the climate changes to suit the Chimera. It gets all snowy and everything. Like, at the end of Resistance 3, which I'm not going to spoil, but certainly, you know, that's how the Chimera operate, and you're going to see that in later games. So now we're, uh, this is the last chapter of the game. I'm pretty sure we're gonna go in the tower. It's been quite a few years since I last finished this game. I think it was, what, 2008? 2009? When I finished, last time I finished this game? Pretty sure I already talked about that in a, previ in a previous part of this exact... Let's play. Let's use the dragon. Burn them mother uckas up. Every so often I get a comment about how people um, don't like me swearing. And that's, I would assume that's because like on Let's Talk PlayStation, I, you know, try to stay a little more cord, not, I don't know, cordial, like whatever kind of would be the best word here, but you know, certainly more professional, I guess, which I don't even think is a good word either, because I'm, let's face it, I'm not professional, but I don't know. Why am I trying to light that on fire? Um, but, you know, I'm not as casual there because I'm trying to present information to you, like news. Like, I, you know, there's an opinion side to it as well, but I still try to, like, you know, be very thought-provoking in Let's Talk PlayStation. Point being, here I'm much more laid back and you get a little bit of, you get to learn a little bit more about me. So I, I would assume that when people watch this, uh, Let's Plays after coming from Let's Talk PlayStation, they're like, man, like... You know, he's swearing a lot left and right. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I'm if I'm feeling that. I apologize if you don't like that, but uh, it's not going to change clearly because this is who I am. Um, I, I curse like a sailor. That is just my mannerisms. That's just how I am. And uh, it ain't going to change anytime soon, man. I'll tell you that right now. I embrace it. I like it. I like who I am. You should you should always love who you are, unless you're a terrible person, which uh, you know, I, there's a lot of terrible things about me, and I actually unfortunately embrace those traits as well which is not good or healthy really uh, makes me seem kind of cynical maybe even evil in a way because you know you're proud of your your poor actions I was about to say I know I saw you go up here um, 
But I don't know, man. I've done things in life that I'm not that you know I'm not particularly proud of. But it's like I kind of have no fucking remorse for it, you know. It's like kind of like dark, you see, you know. Clearly, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to divulge details into certain uh, specific topics. It's not like I murdered people for crying out loud, but um, you know. Maybe more petty things, like taking advantage of people, perhaps, in a unruly or, you know, sadistic manner. I don't know. At least I'm being up front with you. At least I'm fucking telling you the truth here. I think it's the, the best way uh, to present yourself is to be absolutely truthful to who, to who you are. Even if that's, even if it's like certainly a negative thing, at least be upfront about it. So that way people know that you're a bad person and they should stay away from you. Which I guess that means you should stay away from me. Little advice, people. Don't ever trust me. Because I will backstab you in a second. Nah, I'm just kidding. If you do, if you take the time to watch my videos, man, you're more than likely a very a true close friend to me. Because, uh... Like I said, man, I don't... I can't believe some people actually watch this stuff. Well, that was a short scene. I always turn the volume up after when a cutscene starts so that I can hear it too. Because once the gameplay starts, I turn the volume all the way down so I can get the audio as quiet as possible. Which isn't that... Which I kind of have to do, but at the same time, like, it's kind of hard to do because, um... In my room... Oh, shit. Holy fuck, dude. Um, in my room, I've got an air purifier running. I've got two fish tanks running. That's pretty much it, actually. It's not like a long list, but those two items certainly like make a lot of noise. Because uh, I, I have I had the air purifi purifier running on its highest setting, and that's because I have uh, my pet rats, which which uh, we've talked about before. And rats, if you didn't know about rats, rats are very uh, they have a lot of uh, congestion issues. They are very nasally. They have uh, respiratory issues throughout their life, and you have to be very careful. You have to have a dust-free home. Um, I'm drop, dropping down more, uh, more pet knowledge for you. Gave you the lobster, the crayfish knowledge, now I'm gonna give you the rat knowledge. Um, ooh, that's what I should use, I should, I should use the auger. Uh, yeah, they have, they can have a lot of issues like that, and I've unfortunately learned the repercussions of that firsthand, premature, prematurely losing some rats, which, um, you know, it sucks. But, you know, you learn from, you know... You learn from stuff like that. So if I could help anybody that's actually going to buy a pet rat, uh, know that. Get a clean home, air purifier for sure, that always helps. Um, uh, the bo for the bottom of the cage, you're going to want to um, not use CareFresh, not use wood chips. They're bad for their feet. Um, CareFresh can be pretty dusty. Wood chips can be, you know, like little chips can get in their nose. You want to go with a nice fleece blanket, and now, granted, a fleece blanket is not going to hide all like the like you know their little nuggets of poop and everything. Um, but it you know, you get a nice fleece blanket and you change that about every week. You wash it uh, with any other like maybe your work clothes or something, something that you don't want to wash it with your good clothes. You, you know, you don't want all that rat pee and poop all over your stuff. But uh, you do wash it. I'll wash your fleece blanket. Uh, dust free, I already covered. What are some other tips? Just to make sure they're happy and healthy. Uh, their diet, you know, make sure they're eating uh, nice, healthy food. Rats will eat anything. It's good to always give them treats. Uh, because you always want to treat your animals like they're, you know, on top of the world. And, you know, they're just the, the best things ever, which they are. Treat them as such. But, uh, don't overdo it. Because, uh, you know, not good for them. Your rat will get all fat, then you'll just have a big old butterball rat. And then, uh, you know, life. He won't live as long as he, uh, as he should. Which, uh, that pretty big negative about rats, they only live for about two years. Which, you know, if you're a pet, o pet owner, like, that's tragic, because it's hard for a lot of people that lose their pets. They get really emotional, and, you know, I do too. And for, uh, you know, I think I kind of like that though because, well, for me, for me at least, I like that I can kind of handle death better than most people. But I, I'm acknowledging that a lot of people definitely can't take it, and that sucks for them. 
Um, but when I do lose a pet, you know, it sucks, but I, I kind of, like, understand it, and I can move on a little bit quickly from it. To the point where I don't let it drag me down for a month, you know. But yeah, they only live two years, uh, minimum, you know. I've had a, I've, like I said earlier, I've lost a rat prematurely because of, like, respiratory issues. He died at about a year old, which, you know, sucks. Uh, and if you've got them on a really strict diet, if you're really, like, you're treating that rat well and you've got everything going on for him, he's nice and healthy, you're giving him exercise and everything, uh, you can, you can push it to a, uh, an extra year. So you can get them, oh, shit. Uh, you can get them to go three years for sure. Right now, my two rats that I have right now, they're about six, seven months. So, I'll let you know how far the, how far I can get them. I'm doing pretty good with them. I got them on some really good food, really expensive food. And, uh, yeah, I got the air purifier running, so that's all good. Man, things we talk about while we play uh, Resistance Fall of Man. Where am I supposed to go? This way? Wasn't I already down there? Oh, I'm lost. I'm lost. This way? Did I come up from here? Dude, I don't know where to go. What's my objective say? Nothing, because it doesn't have one. Rendezvous with Cartwright's team. Well, shit. I may have to make a cut here if I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Well, maybe I can just walk right through the front door. How does that sound? Okay, did not work. Uh, I've got a lot of pop songs stuck in my head. Like Katy Perry and Kesha. Some Nelly Furtado. A lot of pop. I'm into pop. I like it. I like mainstream music. I got no shame saying that. There's a reason why it's popular. Because it's good. I like when people bitch about it. Oh, mainstream music sucks. This guy killed this genre of music. Well, come on. They're successful. Does Is that not what defines, uh... <laughs> is that not what defines, um... You know, success and, you know... Uh, good content? I don't want to, like, start a huge argument there, but, you know... I find that to be a pretty valid point. Uh, dude, I really, I really don't know where to go. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, we're at 28 minutes, so how about I stop there, I figure out where to go, and I'll see you on the next part. Does that sound good? I think it does.